Welcome to MathsMaster.org. In this lesson we're going to look at column subtraction with decimal numbers. So here's two decimal numbers. We're going to do 3.4 take away 1.2. The most important thing you have to remember is to get the decimal points lined up with each other, one above the other as you can see here. That helps you lay out the question correctly so that then all the units digits, in this case the 3 and the 1, are lined up above each other and then the tenths digits, the 4 and the 2, are lined up as you can see. So then you literally just do the subtraction that you can see in each column. 4 take away 2 is 2 and then we put our decimal point in down here and then 3 take away 1 is 2. So the answer to this question is 2.2. Same again now, line the decimal points up above each other, that helps you lay out the question, but notice this time that uh, we've got one number that's got two digits after the decimal point, and the second number has only got one digit after the decimal point. It's really important when you do column subtraction that if you've got a different number of digits after the decimal point that you make them the same number of digits by adding in extra zeros like I did here. It's really important especially when it comes to borrowing which is something that we're going to look at next. However, after we've put that zero in we can now just do the column subtraction as in the last question. So 5 take away 0 is 5. 6 take away 5 is 1. Put the decimal point in. 9 take away 8 is 1. And then 1 take away nothing is 1. So the answer to this question is 11 point one five okay now we're going to have a look at an example when you have to do what is called borrowing but it's not that tricky just watch what I do in this case after lining up the decimal points and getting all the numbers next to them lined up perfectly as you can see, we then start on the right hand side and do 3 take away 4. But if you think about it, 3 take away 4 would actually be a number that's less than 0. It would be a number that's a negative number. And when you're doing column subtraction you can't have that. So we can't do 3 take away 4 if we're doing column subtraction because the number would be less than 0. So we have to do what's called borrowing. We borrow 1 from the next column over. So in this case you cross out the 8 and we borrow 1. So that becomes a 7 and the 1 that we borrow goes there turning this number into 13. Then we do 13 take away 4 is 9. That's fine. We can do that one put the decimal point in and we do 7 take away 5 is 2 so the answer is 2.9 okay I've got an example here where we've got one number with just one digit after the decimal point and another number with two digits after the decimal point. And also we're going to have to do some borrowing. So now we're just going to combine together the two things we learned from the last two questions. So the first thing is we need to put a zero in here. You need the same number of digits after the decimal point. Okay, now let's go. Zero take away six we can't do. That would be a number less than zero. So we need to borrow one from this column. Cross out the three. That goes down to a two. And the one that we borrowed goes there, turning that number into ten. So now we do ten take away six is four. Two take away seven. Well, we can't do that. 
So we're going to have to borrow one from the next column over. So we cross out that 2, that goes down to a 1, and the 1 we borrowed goes there, turning that number into 12. 12 take away 7 is 5. We put our decimal point in, and then finally we do 1 take away 1 is 0. So the answer to this question is 0 0.5. Four. Look at another example now. We've actually got a whole number take away a decimal number. So this is very, very similar to the last time, but this time we actually do need to put the decimal point and two zeros in on the end of the whole number to start us off. That's really important. Remember, we need the same number of digits after the decimal point, so we put that in. 5.00 is the same as 5, but we need to put 5.00 in to help us uh, with this calculation method. Okay, let's start off. 0 take away 4, we can't do, that would be a number less than 0. So we'll borrow one from the next column. But we can't, look, the next column's a 0. So we have to go to the next column over, the 5. We'll borrow one from that. So we'll cross the 5 out, that goes down to a 4. And this column, that top number becomes a 10. OK. We still can't do that 0, take away 4 in our first column on the right. So we'll now borrow one from the second column. That 10 goes down to a 9, and the one we borrowed goes there. Now, 10 take away 4, we can do. That's 6. In the second column, 9 take away 5 is 4. We put the decimal point down there. And then finally, in the left-hand column, 4 take away 3 is 1. So the answer to this question is 1.46. We'll look at one final example now, where we have to do a lot of borrowing. So we'll put, the we'll put the extra zero in on the end of this number to ensure that we have the same number of digits after the decimal point, in this case three. OK, right, so we've put the zero and we can now start doing our column subtraction. Five take away zero is five. Next column, 0, take away 3. Well, we can't do that one. It would be a number less than 0. So can we borrow from the next column? No, we can't. So we'll borrow from the next column over from that one, from the 7. That goes down to a 6. And the one we borrowed goes there. We still can't do our 0, take away 3. So now we'll borrow one from this column. That 10 goes down to a 9. And the one we borrowed goes there. Now we can do 10 take away 3, so that becomes a 7. Next column over, 9 take away 3 is 6. Put the decimal point in. And then finally, 6 take away 2 is 4. So the answer to this question is 4.675. That was column subtraction of decimal numbers. If you want to see some more fantastic maths videos, please visit mathsmaster.org.